Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how to replace a leaking power steering pump. Now power steering pumps put an awful lot of pressure, 1500 PSI or more. The main seal behind the shaft here, eventually when it wears out, it starts leaking fluid all over the place. And really, don't try to fix one of these things. There's so much pressure, the shafts wear. Install another one. And if you're getting one, do like my customer did get a brand new one. The rebuilt ones are often junk. They make noise. They shudder. In the past I tried rebuilt ones and they bit me in the rear end. They either made noise or they didn't work right. They'd shudder when you pulled on them or they didn't even put any power at all. They did nothing. So you're really better with a new one. In this case he went to AutoZone. You can buy them cheaper online, yes. But who knows where they come from? What kind of a guarantee you're really gonna get? Stick locally, that's my philosophy when it comes to buying parts like this. Because if there's a problem, you can easily return it. They got a great guarantee. And let's face it, they buy a lot of pumps. Yeah, this thing's from China. But they know which Chinese companies to use. They're not going with the cheapest one because if they did and they all went bad, it'd make them look bad and they sell a lot of pumps. Now in this Toyota Matrix, it's hidden pretty far away. As you can see with my new fancy light, if you look way underneath all this stuff, that little shiny white part there, that's the end of the pump. So we gotta jack the car up and take the tire off to get to that. Don't try to do this baby from the top, it would drive you insane. Jack it up nice and high. Stick a jack stand under there. Then take off the wheel. We'll take the splash cover off. And voila. There's the pump right here. Now first we have to remove the fan belt, which in this case has to be done from the top. I use a long extension and a 19 millimeter socket. This right here is the nut. It goes on there, then you pull it to the right to loosen it. Get a 19 millimeter socket that fits tight. These things are easily stripped. Sometimes they break by themselves anyway and you gotta replace the whole automatic tension. But in this case, let's see what happens. There, now it's on and we'll pull it. Ugh. And the belt has gotten loose. Then we just slip it off, take it out of the way because we're getting a new one. You can see this belt is ruined. It's all gooey from the fluid leaking on it. We got to replace this gooey belt. Now this is going to be a messy job, so get a big pan to catch the oil when the fluid drips out as you take it apart. Now we'll unbolt this bottom line, take that little bolt out, and then this line here, right here, has to come off. They stick on, so we get a big pry bar. Here's the screwdriver pry bar and we'll pry it out. Because they stick in there. Get it under there. And a little prying. Off it comes. That's why you need the pan underneath. There's a reason behind this. Then there's two bolts inside. 14 millimeter. Get this on and take them off. Now before you take the second bolt off on the pump. The high pressure line's bolted here. There is a giant 19 millimeter hose that goes on there. You'll never get it off unless this is still partly bolted on. You can't see it because there's no filming room, but this slips over that nut and loosens it. It's a 19 millimeter crow's foot wrench. You gotta have that. It hooks up to your socket so when you pull on it, it hooks up to your socket wrench and when you pull on it, uh, that'll break it loose. It's hiding up in here where you can't see it. Uh, there, now it's loose. That's the hard part. Then you can just turn the crow foot end with your bare hand once you take the wrench off of it. It'll unscrew and you can get the high pressure hose out of the way. You'd never be able to get that off if you would have pulled it off. There, there's the end of the high pressure hose right here. You can see it's dripping down now too. Then after a lot of cursing and swearing getting those three bolts off, out it comes. Here's the old leaking greasy pump. Then we just take off the switch here. There's a pressure switch on top of the old pump. We got to use that over. The new pumps don't come with a new switch. And as you can see here, it just screws into the top here. Then get it super tight. Uh, then you bolt the pump on. There's no working room to see, so you kind of do it blind. And you get the line, and you stick that crow's foot there. There's the crow foot right here. And you start spinning it around till you get it snug. Then you put the wrench on it to tighten it finally to get it tight. You need it super tight. 
Not much working room. It's a dirty, greasy job. There's no arguing that. As you can see here, here's the wrench. Goes the whole way, and then you just... You want it super tight. No one that sucker leaking. Now comes the fun of putting the new fan belt on, because the old one was covered with oil. I, of course, have a data system, so I printed out a picture. You can look it up online, or before you do this job, take a picture of where they are. It's kind of hard to see from the top, so it's better to take a picture off the internet, so you know where it goes. There's only one belt, and it goes all over the freaking place. <laughs> They don't want you snapping on, which was one heck of a job. I actually had to get a helper on this one. The pull on the pipe, because you got to pull on the pipe and snap the belt on at the same time, which is virtually impossible with a new belt. The old belt's stretched and it comes off, but the new ones are tight. So, with one guy pulling and me pushing on the bottom, we finally got it on and we'll fill it up with power steering fluid. Just pour it in. Then you have to bleed the air out, so leave it jacked up in the air. Start it up and turn the wheel. Then chop up the fluid. In this case, it has a line. You put it to the middle line. Middle line cold, top line hot. And then turn the wheel back and forth to bleed out the air. So that was generally bleed really fast. You didn't even hear it going yang yang, which they'll often do as they bleed the air out. This thing's all bled out now, ready to go. We just put the wheel back on, take it down. And away we go. So the next time your power steering pump starts leaking, why not fix it yourself? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.